Hello friends, it is Friday the 18th of September at 5 o'clock. I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik, and it is time for Wine and the Word. So I am really pleased to see you today. I hope that you have had a wonderful week. We always begin by sharing some highs and lows together. So since the last time I was with you, the high point, possibly the high point of my week, aside from the cookies that I shared about last time, um, is that I made this really amazing rosemary and sea salt bread that basically required no effort on my part. It stayed in a bowl overnight, like I mixed it and then it stayed overnight and then I kneaded it in the morning for like a minute and then baked it and it is so delicious. So that's a keeper of a recipe. So I'm very excited about how that turned out. So that's a good high point for my day. It's going to go nicely with this wine in just a few minutes. Uh, probably the low point of my day might be the number of times that I had cars go by when I was recording my sermon because um, there were a lot. There will still be a lot here tonight, but I can't bring myself to go inside because it feels almost like summer out here. So I'm sorry about the cars, both in this video and the Sunday video, and I hope that you'll be okay with that because it's so gorgeous outside. So whatever your own highs and lows might be, I hope you'll share them with someone. And if you don't have somebody nearby you can do that with, feel free to message me. I'm happy to share your life just as you are sharing mine. This is part of what it means to be the body of Christ, so keep building up that body. Today we are going to talk about one of the conversations that God had with Abraham. So we heard at the very beginning of the summer about God calling Abraham and Sarah to go from their current location, their current home, and to travel on to a new one, but not exactly where that would be. God just said, go where I will show you. And it says they pulled up stakes and went on. And so they went on for a ways and there was all sorts of things that happened, of course. But today I want to talk just a little bit about the next conversation that happened. So God said go and Abraham and Sarah went and then um, a little while later, like this is probably at least a year on, maybe more, in the end of chapter 13 of Genesis we get this conversation about how um, Lot had separated, Abraham and Lot couldn't fit in the space, they had too many flocks and herds and whatnot, and so they needed more room, so they separated into two different areas of the land. And after that, it says, beginning at verse 14, this is the New Revised Standard Version. Now the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Rise up, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. So this reading is really fascinating to me for a couple of reasons. One is that Abram had already traveled the length of this land because we know from chapter 12 that he traveled from Haran, which is, in the, is to the north, and he'd been to Egypt. So he walked all the way down with all of his tents and herds and people and everything, they traveled to Egypt, they were there for a little while, and then they came back and into the Negev, which is the southern part of what is today Israel. And now God is saying, walk the whole length and breadth of this land. And Abram must be like, oh, again? Like I already did that. So all that he can see in every direction, God is promising. 
And so, of course, it says, just like it did in the beginning when God said, go, and Abram and Sarah went, it says, they moved the tent, and they came, and they settled by the Oaks of Mamre, which will be an important place later on, and we might hear about them again next week. But if not, just remember that's the place where the three strangers appeared, and Abram um, entertained them with great hospitality, and that has become a part of our tradition about how when you entertain strangers, you may be entertaining God. So that's how they moved to that place. But interestingly, not just the land is a topic of discussion here. God says, I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Now remember that in the beginning, God created humanity from the dust of the earth. And now we have God saying to Abram, like dust, that's your people will be everywhere. I think that's a really interesting connection about how God created the first people from dust. And now God is going to create a whole nation, a whole people, a whole covenant people from the dust. Or perhaps it's more accurate to say like the dust. But there's a bit of a problem because, of course, Abram and Sarai don't have any children. And they're already elderly. When they left Haran, Abram was 75. So we're all, he's pushing 80 by the point of this conversation. And yet still, that's the promise. And on the strength of those words, Abram pulls up the stakes yet again and moves to a new place. And I wonder if we have ever heard a promise like this. It doesn't sound super inspiring. Like, there is dust everywhere, to be fair. And it's um, pervasive. And it's hard to get rid of. And it would be impossible to count all of the little... I don't want to say grains exactly, but like all the sort of motes of dust that even just float around one room, let alone that cover the entire world. Like that's a lot. There's a lot of dirt, a lot of sand, a lot of dust, whatever translation you have. So we are talking about a lot of people that God is promising to make from Abram. And the first promise was, I'll make you a great nation and you will be a blessing. The whole world will be blessed because of you. And now we have this blessing that you are creating will be like the dust of the earth. It will be impossible to get rid of. It will be everywhere. There will be so much you don't even know how, how to manage it. And on that promise, Abram moved again after walking hundreds of miles with all his stuff on the backs of donkeys or camels. And that feels to me like a really big deal. And even when we hear promises, I'm not sure how often we act on them. So I wonder if you have ever heard a promise like this or perhaps made a promise like this that, that affected your behavior. Because that's what God is asking of us here, that our response to the promise will be life-changing. That's a big thought for a Friday afternoon, but I think it's one to carry into the weekend, um, especially when it's a beautiful weekend and when there's a lot going on in the world. And uh, sometimes I think God's promise gets lost in the midst of everything else. So that's my thought of the day is, <laughs> what is our response to the promise? What is the life-changing response that we are making? To the promises of God. So as we ponder that, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have made. We give you thanks for the breadth and width and height of your promise to us. We ask that you would lead us in our faithfulness that we may respond to your promise with the same amount of grace and love that you made it with. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, sunshine in Guruk.
Friday afternoon. I hope you have a great weekend and then I'll see you on Sunday. Until then, cheers and peace be with you.